Good morning. My name is Mark Tomeko. Deacon Paul couldn't join us this morning uh, for our weekly men's Bible study. Uh, we thank those of you who have joined us in the past. And if you're new to this, this is a, a small group of men that meets every week, uh, usually at a local restaurant, to talk about the upcoming Sunday uh, readings and gospel for Mass. Uh, this has been going on now for several years. Um, this is the sixth Sunday of Easter, and these are our reflections on the readings we're going to hear at Mass this Sunday. So without further ado, we're going to go around our group one time, and everyone is going to give their title for the readings. So you're up, Tom. My, my title is Daddy Warbucks. My title is You Have the Right to Remain Still. I'm mute, Phil. Oh, no, I'm not. I said on that title, I probably should remain silent, but I, I am blessed. My uh, title is Flyley, P-H-I-L-E-A. With you always. And my title is Always Be Ready. So we're going to go back to Tom, who's going to tell us his favorite verse and, and what he took from these readings. Uh, my favorite verse, uh, Daddy Warbucks obviously uh, adopted Orphan Annie. Um, he, um, Jesus says in the first part of the Gospels, I will not leave you orphans. He says the um, Father will give you another advocate to be with you always, the spirit of truth. And uh, I've always found that... that um, comforting. I, I, I'm sure the uh, apostles wonder what the heck he was talking about, but in 2,000 years of history, we we know what he was talking about. He's given us the Holy Spirit, and uh, the Spirit is is always with us. And I like the description I heard once about the uh, the Holy Spirit being hovering over the earth, over over God's creation, kind of like um, kind of like a um, good shepherd drone keeping an eye on things and, and helping out here or there, wherever he needs to. Do. Um, so I, I always found that uh, fairly comforting. He's always there, not, not just up in the atmosphere somewhere, but within our, within each, within each of us. So that's mine. Next. Uh, my verse was uh, taken from the gospel. And, and the verse says, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you all, the spirit of truth. Well, all of us have watched TV programs, and we've seen the priest read to the suspect, the Miranda warning, the suspect. But one line, the one line stands out and applies to today's uh, Sunday's gospel. You have a right to an attorney, et cetera, et cetera. If you are a suspect and have a court appointed attorney, you do not have to stand alone in front of a judge. You have a defense attorney to stand by you. It is interesting that the Lord described the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth, the old name is a comforter, paraclete, as an advocate for the church. The Greek word for advocate, which is spelled P-A-R-A-K-L-E-T-O-S, is parakletos, also means, of all things, defense attorney. So in the Bible, the devil is portrayed as our adversary, the one that never stops tempting us in our daily life. So with our advocate, we don't have to stand alone facing the devil in our daily life. Jesus, Jesus gave us the best defense attorney in history, the Holy Spirit, to stand with us against the lies of the devil. The Holy Spirit assures us, if we listen, of God's love and his forgiveness of our sins. And best of all, the Holy Spirit never, ever gives up on us and will be with the church until the end of time. Next. Um, as I read all the readings looking for the, the common thread, um, got to the end. And I realized um, how blessed I really am. Um, I never was challenged to have to believe that um, the promise that Jesus made 
to us. He, he will he will not leave us orphans. He will he will uh, he will be there for us and guide us. Um, the uh, the last line: Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. That, that's what we need to do. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and re reveal myself to him. He promises us nothing but good. We just have to believe in him. Uh, it's easy for us to do. It was hard for those uh, the people in the early church. Um, we learned many times they always needed proof of God in some way. Uh, show me, show me what he what he's doing or what he can do. Um, that that came out to me in in uh, the first readings. Um, in the uh, response to some, blessed be God who refused me not my prayers or his kindness. God, we're blessed because God listens to our prayers and he's, he's good to us. So the bottom line is um, I feel blessed. There was one time I said something about I was lucky, but a nice old guy said to me, no, 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 you're blessed. And I am blessed. I, that's, that's how I feel. So whoever is next. Lyle is a Greek word, uh, one of the four ancient Greek words for love. And mine is from the gospel. The gospel begins and ends with love. If you love me, you will keep my commands. And then at the end, whoever loves me will be loved. In this environment that we are faced with today, who is there that we could love or just even respect? Democrats, Republicans, China, U.S. Senate House. Who would our children say is loved from this situation? How can we convince them to forget what they hear and tell them Jesus is the one we should turn to, as he is the one that should have the most respect? I'm reminded of a poem written by Robert Fulgham in 1990, All I Really Need to Know. And it ends with, and it is still true, no matter how old you are, when you go out in this world, it is best to hold hands and stick together. We have to divert the children's attention to the one that we should all love. So from the gospel, I will ask the father and he will give, him, give you another advocate to be with you always. I'm pretty, uh, blessed that I didn't uh, really prepare much to say and um, this is going to be a little bit of code for everybody that uh, Dave you are truly awesome because Dave uh, stole every bit of uh, <laughs> every bit of what I wanted to say uh, today and I'll just add that um, you know we have we see the word advocate we've seen the word paraclete paraclete you know, what does that really mean? Advocate isn't really a strong enough word for what Jesus is promising us. And so I chose with you always, you know, he sends down, as Dave says, a somebody like a defense attorney, somebody that is, you know, that if you, if you read again, as Dave was saying about the translation of that word, um, it's somebody that had a great standing in the community that could vouch for you. Um, we have symbols, you know, for the Holy Spirit, fire, water, a dove, different things, peace. But fire and water we've talked about before in our group, very destructive forces and almost forcing us. It, 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 it's with us to help force us to change and to realize the, the great things that we can do to not just you know, sometimes sit back and let things come to you to actually accomplish and do things that, that we're meant to do. Um, I'll pass it on to Mark. My uh, title was Always Be Ready. And um, that, of course, comes out of the second reading, uh, Peter's letter, where he says, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. I've always loved that line. I've always tried to try to practice that to be to be ready to explain to anyone at any time why I have hope and faith. Um, 
in, in Jesus and what he's done for me. But I'm actually kind of cheating because I really reflected on that line by looking more closely at the first reading. So, you know, the first reading we have Philip, another one of those um, first deacons of the church who goes down from Jerusalem down to Samaria. And he's proclaiming the gospel message to the Samaritans. And, you know, we've all, we've read it. Um, the crowds are in awe of what he's saying and in what he's doing. Um, but what I had to do is I wanted to look back and see, well, where in the Acts of the Apostles does this story come from? What, what had been going on? And it's actually right before this that Stephen, that other first deacon, uh, was stoned to death. And from that began a great persecution of Christians in Jerusalem, which caused many of them to start to scatter throughout uh, the region. So when you, when you think about that, Philip has now gone to Samaria. He's one of those early Christians who's fleeing persecution. And he's gone to Samaria, not to, uh, you know, cower, not to hide, um, not to say, you know, I did believe in this Jesus guy, um, but my gosh, just things getting tough there, there in Jerusalem for us Christians. He goes, and I believe he gave a, an explanation for the reason for his hope. You know, despite all the persecution, despite what these new converts to Christianity in Samaria are going to face, he's there saying, look, there's, there's something greater than just this. So I thought this was kind of, um, you know, important in, in our time today, not just, um, not just this virus that we're all dealing with and, and uh, you know, we're worrying about, but also if we think about it, you know, suffering is one of the great mysteries of life. Why do we suffer? And I'm always in awe of you know, when we get an email on the prayer chain and usually when it's from the family of someone who's died and they say in that, that email, you know, that they're, Sometimes it's a spouse or a child or a parent or, or a sibling. And they say, you know, they, they've left us, but, and then they go on to show why they're still very hopeful and why they're grateful for their life, um, but also how they know that they're now in that better place. They're with our Lord, you know, for eternity. And it's that type of, of explanation for our hope that I think we need to share in these difficult times. All right, so we're gonna go around again and start to hear about our challenge verses. Back to you, Tom. Sentences in the gospel. Um, whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. And um, I think the first, um, the challenge is observing his commands. Uh, obviously, um, to me, and um, that uh, the first sentence is, is pretty straightforward. Um, if, uh, if you, your love will be, uh, test, is, will be testified by your observance and by the good works that you do. The second um, a sentence so I had a little trouble with, um, whoever loves me will be loved by my father and I will love him and reveal myself to him. Um, um, loving God uh, seems to be predicated upon uh, us observing Him, uh, following His 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 um, His will. Um, but then, um, but then He says, "Whoever loves Me will be loved by My Father, and I will love Him and reveal Myself to Him." And I, what I take out of that is. Um, um, it seems as if um, God loving us depends upon our our actions. Uh, is, but I I I don't think that's the, the meaning I I want to get out of that. God's love is unconditional. God, as John says um, in his first letter, um, we love God because He loved us first. So I think God's love is there um, uh, all the time, um, and we. Um, we do fall, we do fail, um, and uh, I think it's pr probably uh, impossible to observe every one of Jesus' commands at every moment of our life. And um, I, I don't think we should uh, 
worry over this. Um, I like uh, I, I, I like Merton's uh, explanation of of this when if from Merton's prayer, we've all heard a hundred times. Uh, the fact that I think I am following your will does not mean that I'm actually doing so. But I believe that the desire to please you does in fact please you. And I hope I have that desire in all that I am doing. And, um, you know, although, although we, uh, we fall and we sin, um, there is always forgiveness. But I think, I think the desire to do God's will is very, very important. And I think that does please him. And uh, so I think what we, the, the, um, the um, challenge, uh, I think day, day in, day out is to do his will, to discern his will and to do it. And I think the desire to do that is, is very important. And uh, I think most of the time we won't do as well. Uh, next. Well, Doc took some of my thunder, but uh, the very first line in the gospel, Jesus said to his disciples, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Well, as we all know that obedience is greater than sacrifice. If we remember, when Christ was dying on the cross, they were slaughtering the lambs in the temple in preparation, in preparation for a Passover. So the Lord, by his death, overcame the physical sacrifice of animals, and he turned that into obedience to his commandment. If we follow what he tells us to do, we follow his GPS, right? GPS, we will get where we should be going at the end of our life, and that is to be with him in heaven. So obedience is greater than sacrifice. Yet, when we don't do our job, my job, follow the commandments, we fail miserably. Obviously, we do that on a regular basis, and that's why we have confession. But obedience is greater than sacrifice. If you do what the Lord wants you to do, you will meet him in heaven. Next. Okay. Um... My challenge comes from the second reading. It reflects a lot of what uh, we're thinking and saying already. Uh, for it is better to suffer for doing good than if, if that be the will of God, than for doing evil. It's, it is hard sometimes to do good because we should be doing God's will and you can be rejected by, by people. And you have to take that rejection. But does it mean you stop doing good? We need to continue to do his will and do good. It's, it's the challenge in life. You know, uh, living the word, praying the word, uh, being that example that people need good is what we we need to do. So uh, that's my challenge. And whoever's next. That would be me. I'm gonna use the second uh, reading also, like Mark did, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. <sighs> Many times we're faced with challenges and sometimes even those that are closest to me, my children, my children, my son-in-laws, ask me why I'm not mad at God for giving me cancer. I tell them to look at all he has given me, my wife, my children, my grandchildren. All are happy and healthy and so am I. Keep in mind that he gave up his son. How can I complain about a few cells in my body? As uh, Jim just did and Mark before, I also chose the second reading, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. And I picked up on something Mark said and I actually wrote it down. He used the word despite a couple times. So I, I started to think despite a, despite a virus. Um, I chose this as a challenge because I've really been the opposite the last month like almost despair which is i think the opposite of hope 
but we're supposed to be hope for each other. And I felt really bad missing last week because um, I've been pretty much here as many times as I can be. Um, but what we do here each week, you know, even if we're agreeing or even sharing the same verses and again, code, you guys are truly awesome picking the same verses. <laughs> um, but we're here to kind of challenge and, and sometimes validate our ideas. I think that gives us encouragement. I think you can be encouraged to, if you need to be thinking the opposite way, if you're, you know, if, if you need to, if we need to do that, we're here for each other. I, I think right now, despite a virus, um, these are the things that we do to, to be like Jesus is saying about with being with you always, that we're that person, we're that advocate, we're that, we're that defense attorney. I wanted to pick up on something Tom said that, um, Tom, I think you're right, that this is why we, this is why Jesus said we need an actual, the, the, the Par Paracletus is actual person that can vouch for us. And we need that person because we can't do it ourselves. We, we literally, and God knows this, we literally cannot do this ourselves. We are going to fall because we are human. So we need that strong of a presence it, it's it's God's grace that allows us to to live morally. We don't. It's not the other way around. We live morally and we gain something. It's we need to have His grace to be able to then attain what He has uh, promised us. So, Tom, I think you're right when you when your analysis of how that relationship works. We really can't do it ourselves, and that's why we're given these tools. That, that Jesus has promised us. So with that, I'll, I'll turn it over to Mark. All right, so using Eric's new phrase, um, Tom and Dave, you guys are truly awesome. Um, I, I had a feeling we'd have similar uh, favorite verses or challenge verses today. Um, and so like Tom and Dave, I, I chose that first line from the gospel, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And the way I, I thought about this is, um, you know, it is a challenge. It, it's, it, it's tough. And it really, I remember reading this a, a while back and like this line really cuts to the heart. You know, I mean, here is Jesus telling us, I'm, I'm consider myself one of his disciples. So he's speaking to me and saying, if, if, if I truly love him, I'm going to follow his commands. And we know what his commands are. His commands are to love God and love one another. Um, but I've fallen short. And I know there are times that I've chosen to fall, to fall short. Um, I've chosen not to love and, and to follow or keep his commandments. Um, and so in those moments, I've chosen not to love him or at least not to love him the way that I can. Uh, but what I thought about was um, that, you know, there's so many things in our lives that we will work hard to, to get better at. Um, we'll work hard to follow quote unquote commandments for, um, you know, using something trivial. I don't golf, but I imagine that, um, you know, golfers will study um, the game. They will practice the game. They will force themselves to swing that club a very precise way. In other words, they will follow the commandments of golf because they love the game and they want to enjoy it more. And maybe more seriously, you know, I, I, my wife and my children, um, I will work hard to try to love them better. Um, you know, there's obviously I'm not a perfect husband or father, but I strive to become better because I love them. So the challenge for me is, you know, do I apply that same type of, of practice and discipline and exercise to what Jesus is saying here. Um, do I work at it to follow his commandments of love even more um, to, to show to him, not to prove, you know, he, I, I can't love him anywhere close to the way he loves me. And he doesn't need my love, um, but do I try hard to show him that I love him by following those commandments? That's, that's my challenge every day. All right, 
with that, uh, we are going to go around one more time to offer some quick prayer intentions, and then we're going to close with a prayer. So we're going to follow our order again. So back to you. Um, uh, I'd like to pray today for uh, all the um, obviously all the people who are suffering uh, from uh, the um, coronavirus and those health caregivers who, uh, especially the ones that, that had been in. Uh, on the front lines in New York, who'd, who'd uh, risked their lives taking care of taking care of those people. And I'd like to also a young man that was on the prayer chain last week, a 23 year old boy who uh, who had a severe head injury from a skateboard accident. And his in the pay his obituary was in the paper day he died. So I'm sure this is very hard on his family. I'd like to pray for them. So I'd like to thank uh, you guys uh, for the prayers for my daughter in law. She has been. Uh, tested and she is fine now again in remission of her cancer, which is a wonderful thing. This is the second time she's beat a four stage uh, cancer. And I think prayer really, really, really helps in the long run. I don't think people realize that. And pray for all our family. Each one of our families that we, we're going through this difficult time. And I know we're living close together and we get tension in our lives. So pray for each one of us that we could get through this without having major, major problems on their family. Nick? Um, as always, I offer prayers for the people and the families of the people uh, dealing with cancer, give them the strength to get through it. And what's becoming very uh, evident in our pre-meeting discussion, um, people need to accept uh, the decisions uh, that the bishops have made as guidelines to keep us uh, all safe during this time of starting to reopen the church. Um, someday we'll see what the new normal is and uh, that's what we're gonna have, have to live with to, to be safe for everyone. So, uh, and for Tori. I wanna uh, pray for Dave and Alma Myers. Uh, I had the honor to work with Father Tony at a service for Dave uh, the other day. And watching a friend of mine be buried is very difficult. Almost got a tough challenge ahead of her. And hopefully she'll get through this. Very, uh, very specific prayer. Um, I, I, I think every, I think everyone I've shared with this shared with you guys at breakfast. My dad has a type of cancer uh, that affects his immune system, and I got a call from my brother um, Tuesday or Wednesday that my mom had to take my dad to the hospital. I wasn't really understanding what was going on at the time. Um, come to find out, you know, it it wasn't anything respiratory. Although he was saying he was having trouble breathing, they they thought maybe he was having a heart attack. Thankfully, that's not the case, and it's just now another, they found he has congestive heart failure, which is why he was struggling with, you know, even walking a few feet. Um, seems to be doing better now. You know, it's just another ailment that you can live with that, you know, he has now a few of these things going on. So I just, if you guys pray for, you know, my family, my mom and dad um, seem to be struggling with health. And as Phil always says, pray for those people who have cancer. Uh, one more, if I could. Um, we're, we're we're blessed. I'll use the word blessed, but I want to use fortunate that we had adopted a dog a month ago. Um, attack might be the wrong word, um, but the dog attacked my son. <laughs> um, thankfully, that was just uh, you know a little bit of a brush up, but we had to decide to get to to give up that dog because of that. You know, my son is doing fine with all, with you know all things considered. So. Maybe just some Thanksgiving, prayers of Thanksgiving for that. So on to you, Mark. All right. I'd like to pray for um, my best friend's cousin, Kelly, who I guess was recently diagnosed with COVID-19 in her recovery. I learned yesterday a coworker shattered his leg pretty badly um, in an accident and is uh, in the hospital. I pray for him. Um, I'd like pray for all the people I bring communion to at Western Reserve. I got to talk to them via Zoom last Sunday, which was really neat to see them again. Uh, and I just pray that they're doing well in their isolation. And finally for um, uh, Larry Zeal, who had his surgery this week and is recovering now and for his wife, Nancy. And then uh, Deacon Paul asked us, of course, to pray for his parents and their continued health as well. 
So with that, we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. St. Francis Xavier, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us once again, and we'll look forward to seeing you again next week. Everybody have a good week.